All right, coming back to table setup, the next thing we have here is table settings. Now, table settings <coughs> shows you in kind of like a database format all of the different uh, database table records uh, that are in there. So you see, for example, we've got table one, so there's record number one, number two, number three, and so on. And within here, there's about 150 uh, that are already set up within the system by default. If there are more than more than 150 tables, or if you need some form of numeric um, setup where you need something like a 100 series and 200 series and a 300 series or anything like that, then by all means you can add in additional ones as well. But uh, within here, uh, these are the ones that we have within here by default. Now, uh, that being said, let's just take a look at what we've got here. So we've got ta uh, tables 1, 2, and 3, for example. Number of customers. Now in here, each one of these is set up as two, which means that this is these are set up as two seater tables. Okay, So the way I've got my uh, database set up right now, because I've already gone and modified these for my given uh, floor layout, is that all these are set up as two seaters, then from table 11 on are four seaters and so on. The next thing we have here is the dining section. So all of these are designated for poolside, for example. Now, the dining section is also important when you are setting up, if you remember back to when we had the host hostess function within the front end, I was showing you how to seat people at tables and take reservations and deal with a lineup at the door and so on. That was in, in one of our earlier sessions. And in here, this is where you can actually designate that if they want to seat uh, people at table number three, that will be a table for two, and it's in the pool side dining section. And if I wanted to change it to one of the other ones, just select on that field, and there's a little drop-down box, and you can change it to any of the uh, other dining sections if you wish. Next thing we have here is minimum and maximum seating capacity. This is important because uh, within this, um, um, when you're seating people, let's say, for example, there may be one person and you seat them at a two-person table or three people seated at a four-seater table. Um, or you may want to you know, combine a couple of tables together so that uh, you can deal with a party of 12 or something like that. Then within here, you want to ensure as far as what is the maximum capacity of this. So for example, if I have a four-seater table and I want to try to fit a fifth person, you may be able to do that, so you can change that to a five. But if it's six people, no, you wouldn't be doing that, so you'd never have six people seated at a four-seater table. Can reserve. Within can reserve, uh, basically, when you're taking reservations, do you want this table number to show up on the list? Uh, within this, you can change it to a yes or a no. Generally, you would have yes, and you're thinking, well, why would I not want to be able to reserve a table? Well, the reason being is that sometimes if you have an entire establishment set up so that uh, you that does a lot of reservations. If you have it set up so that every table can be, be reserved, then you may find yourself in a situation where, uh, let's say, 7 o'clock on a Friday night and a party of four comes in and they say, I'd like a table for four. And you take a look and, holy mackerel, even though we've got some empty tables here, we've got reservations for every table in the establishment. And so now these people are kind of stuck. You, know, you can't service these people because you've got reservations parked for every one of the tables in the establishment. So it's always a good idea just to have maybe one or two tables that are uh, set up as cannot be reserved, for, especially for places that do a lot of reservations, just so they can deal with some walk-in traffic and be able to accommodate them in situations such as that. And finally, we have here sales type. Use the, the station default. Okay, Now, the sale type, you can set up for these as well. Generally, it's dine-in for this. But for example, it may be a bar stool. You want to change. Uh, sale type on that to something a little bit differently, or or maybe a, a, a kind of a parking holding table, for example, for takeout orders or something like that. Whatever the case, then uh, you can change that around to a specific sale type just by selecting on that and choosing the desired sale type for it. But by default, they will all be whatever set up for the station default for that. Okay, so that's generally what it is for those. Now on a Record by record basis, you can go in here and you can change these around. But I'm actually going to show you within other things we're going to take a look at a much easier way to deal with this and make these changes rather than go in here and do this. This is really good if you're going to do it on a per record basis. But otherwise, you may want to uh, consider changing around to something else. And I'll show you how to do that.